Hopefully we got this thing working now. Evan, can you hear both of us? Can you hear us, Evan? I Evan. The, I think the stream is a little bit behind, so it should be. So give him a couple minutes. Okay. Yeah, so welcome to uh, the For the Win Twitch stream. Hopefully you can hear both of us. Uh, we're going to use Madden to kind of preview the wildcard games. Oh, thank you. Solak, thank you. He said he can hear both of us. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, I thought that this was going to be an absolute disaster. But uh, welcome to For the Win uh, uh, streaming, I guess. Uh, this is an extension of our podcast called The Counter, which you can find basically anywhere that they have podcasts. Uh, we're just going to talk our way through Wildcard Weekend, and I'm going to be Stevens, Matt, uh, Stevens Aston Madden. I'm Charles McDonald. You can find me on Twitter at 4 playing with Stephen Ruiz. You can find him on Twitter at the Stephen Ruiz. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy. If you guys have questions, you can send them in to the Twitch chat, or you can tweet at us, and we'll try to get to them before the end of this game. I just got away with a horrible decision, by the way. Yeah. I mean, look, this whole Twitch stream was a horrible idea. I mean, good lord. <laughs> I cannot believe how long it took us to get this figured out. But honestly, it wasn't our fault. I'm going to blame Sony for making it super-duper convoluted process. Yeah, that, that was a... Re we had to go through, like, three different menus just to figure it out. So that's not on us. That's We are not, like, old boomers that don't know technology. This is on Sony. Be intuitive. <laughs> That's right. And honestly, I wish that we were still using the old setup so that I could get a million sacks with Aaron Donald again, because that was like the easiest <laughs> shit I've ever done in my entire life. Oh, can we curse on here? Uh, yeah, why not? That was a terrible throw. That was late. <laughs> <laughs> in true Jerichoff fashion. I will put in Wolford. Uh, I'm, I'm controlling. Rams. Yeah, Steven's the Rams. Charles is the Seahawks. The first time we tried to do this, I was the Rams, and I got two sacks and three plays with Aaron Donald. In the third play, I have forced an incomplete pass, but no one could hear anything, so we had to start over. But at least now, we have this figured out for the future. And thanks for interacting with us, guys. I don't really know anything about Twitch, but if you guys want to sub, that'd be great, because we're going to try to do this every Thursday through the end of the season. Hey, Kofi. So I guess every Thursday through the end of the season really just means, like, what, three more Thursday, <laughs> but I, I mean, if this goes smoothly, I think this is something that we can do during the season, mainly because it's very low effort. Hello, Shea Butter one two one nine. That was not me. That was the computer. Uh, take some accountability. You're you're coaching. <laughs> coaching I mean, what? I, I feel bad for even trying the fake snap, the like the hard count. Like I'm a loser for doing that. But... Oh, oh, that was a false start on you. Okay. Oh, no. All right, so we should probably talk about this game then, right? Uh, Yeah. I, I mean, we can assume Jared Goff is going to play, right? Yeah, I think, I think he's been practicing. Uh, Yeah, and I mean, I guess the real question is that I don't even know if there's like – if this is like a serious question that people are asking, but um, who who is starting? And is it actually – a benefit for the Rams to be starting John Walford. Like, what do you think about that? Because I kind of think it's it's a little silly. I think it's definitely silly, but if Jared Goff's thumb is hurt and it's bothering him, like, what's the thing about Jared Goff that, like, anyone will agree that he's good at? It's, like, throwing those, like, deep crossers and just throwing in general. Like, he can throw the football. The problem with him is mentally when things – when his first read isn't open, things start to go haywire – Oh, if you take if his thumb takes away that ability, and I'm going for it on fourth and one. Like I don't, I think Sean McVay would probably pick a field goal in this situation. But yeah, because he's a sure. coward. Oh my but, god! Um, and that's why you do it. <laughs> but yeah, Jesus. Jared Goff can't. Throw, Jared Goff can't throw. Then like, what is Jared Goff good for? Uh, he's kind of handsome. <laughs> but he has his helmet on, so that doesn't even count. And right. Are you saying John Walford is not handsome? I don't know what John Walford looks like. That's part of the issue. Oh, get oh, Jesus. Jesus! Okay. Uh, but I guess like, the only interesting part of the John, like John Walford discussion to me is like, uh, is this someone that maybe can give you a little bit 
of you know read option game or just you know something with his legs that right. that Jared Goff doesn't really do, which is like the only real benefit that I can think about starting John Walford. But other than that, it just seems like you run with Goff and pray uh, <laughs> John Walford looks goofy as hell. Thank you, Sockfudge123. I appreciate that comment. And no, I don't want to buy followers. Get that off my screen. Uh, but <laughs> I, I might like, want to buy some. Yeah, I mean, I, come on. Like, John Walford in a playoff game, and the, the thing with, with Jared Goff is at least uh, at least when things are looking right, he can, he can really get the ball down the field. And maybe that doesn't have a whole lot of value throughout the whole course of the season, but it's probably better than what John Walford can offer you. Especially against, like, the Seahawks, where those deeper crossers that I'm talking about, like, that's how they beat the Seahawks in the past. So I think that throwing ability and being able to throw against their defense matters for this particular matchup, whereas maybe against the Cardinals, Walford was just as good of an option as Goff would have been. I don't know uh, that makes, I think yeah, that makes sense. Also, I am the Seahawks, and I'm about to score a touchdown. Oh, oh DK on the first play. <laughs> Why was <laughs> Let's get that team celebration going. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> what coverage did you run? Uh, oh, you... It was, man. Oh, the double buzz coverage? Yeah. That, I, I, oh, man. it's not good on this game because the safeties like like they won't they don't have brains like they'll just literally just stop like ten yards uh, away from the line of scrimmage like DK will just run right past you I think you had a linebacker on him so yeah that was that clutch was, that was like Brandon Staley video game Brandon Staley not as good as real life Brandon Staley. oh yes Charles is the Seahawks. Um, we didn't even get time to talk about the Seahawks offense because you scored so quickly. Like I'm, I'm trying to make the broadcast a little better by taking a little time to drive down the field and all that. But you, you're selfish and you just scored right away. Yeah. Uh, but did you see that? Did you see the comment? You got to play too high to turn Russ's brain into sludge. <laughs> I play too high. I play too high. I was trying to get him to get. I was trying to get you to run the ball, and you did not do it. You threw it deep to DK Metcalf, which is a thing I think the the scouts would try to do. Like trying to get DK Metcalf away from Jalen Ramsey, and then throw it deep to him. Like that's how you win. Right, right, and just like I, I think that that's probably maybe their their best avenue for success. So who's booing? Big BT boy, what are you booing for? But uh, like DK, I think is kind of the key, and I and we wrote about it this week, or I wrote about it in our uh, position battles matchup, where um, I I picked the Seahawks wide receivers going against the Rams CB as one of the uh, one of the uh, key matchups of the entire weekend, and I. <laughs> uh, like if they if if DK can win that matchup against Jalen, that matches up, that that opens up so much for their offense, and I think that that's kind of be going to be the key for them to actually like move the ball through the air because this Rams pass defense is ridiculous. Um, and like one thing they're good at is they're really good at, it, and I think they're better than like anyone in the league, and it's not even close. Is at preventing big plays. Like they only gave up like five throws and. When you're going up against a quarterback like Russell Wilson, who oh, is very God. good on like a down to yeah, that was that was too, on a down to down basis, but he's still like a volatile player, kind of like a high level one where he kind of thrives on those deeper big big plays. And if the Rams can take them away, I do think it, it might turn Russ's brain into mush like too high does. Uh, wow. I feel like, you know, one part of this that might be realistic is you just absolutely mowing through me with the offensive line of the Rams. I mean, this is just something else. <laughs> I mean, if the Rams can run like this, I I honestly don't think the game is, I'm not going to say close or competitive, but I think it's an easy victory for the Rams. Easier than we think it's going to be. Oh, All right. Well, who do you think is a better team, Seahawks or the Rams? Oh, without a doubt, I think the Rams are a better team when everyone's healthy. And if Jared Goff, like, there's two Rams teams 
There's Jared Goff when he's like just doing what the offense allows him to do, and then there's Jared Goff when he hits his pants, right? And when he hits his pants, like there's only so much Tom McVay can do with that. Because there's only so much he can do even when Jared Goff is playing well because Jared Goff's not going to create outside the structure of the offense. So he really, what? I mean, honestly, any discussion of a Rams game, Jesus. Jesus oh, Christ, dude. Let me regroup on defense. I need to regroup. But any discussion with, with the Rams game, like, comes down to Jared Goff. Like, what Jared Goff are we going to get? Because if it's good Jared Goff, then I think they can play with anybody in the league. And for the opposite reason, like what we've seen so far in this game where you're just throwing deep all over me and I do plays <laughs> like 80 yards or 150 yards. Uh, we just got a question from Mike Sims Walker, straight throwback name. Uh, is uh, Jamal Adams good? And I think that's, that's, a, very, a, that's a very loaded question, I would say. Uh, is Jamal Adams good? I mean, I, I, I covered the Jets last year and, and for part of this year, and I, I mean, I think he's a good player. But I think one of the things is that that Greg Williams actually did pretty well uh, in 2019 uh, when he's the defensive coordinator with the Jets. Is like, if Jamal is your best player, you kind of got to build the whole thing around him because he's – and, and agree. Like, he, he hasn't been healthy this year, but I think you kind of got to build the whole thing around him uh, because, oh, my God. Jesus Christ, uh, <laughs> because his talents are so unique. I mean, like, it's so good to have a, a, a blitzer like that in the secondary that can really open things up for your entire defense. But if you're just shoving that guy, like, in in the middle of a preseason, I think that's, that's just going to be a difficult transition for you, no matter what level of talent you have around you. Like, Bobby Wagner and KJ Wright are smart guys, but you still got to adapt to playing with Jamal. And I, I would expect year two of that, experiment to look a lot better than year one but it, it, it also it, it always stings you know like when you trade two first round picks for that guy and you realize eh, maybe we should have held on to this this picks or whatever i cannot make an extra point but i think you made like a good point about next year looking better I think one thing we probably discounted was Jamal adams he came over to the seahawks kind of late in a weird offseason where you're not going to get like a training camp to actually learn the system He's mm-hmm. changing this is the new system for him, so maybe it was always going to take time. But I think the question, like, is Jamal Adams good, is different from is Jamal Adams' first two first round picks, and that's like how you evaluate him. Right. I mean, that whether it's fair or not, like that's what, how we're going to judge him. And right now, yeah. I would say uh, a blitzing uh, blitzing safety who can also blow shit up in the run game probably isn't worth two first round picks. I feel confident. In <sighs> oh. Damn. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, dude, I was about to go with this throw to DK every single play offense. Uh, damn, we got 90 people watching. That's a big, uh, you know, that's a lot of pressure on us. But I, I, Shea Butter asked a good question. <laughs> Shea Butter asked a good question. Did the Jets win the trade? And, I mean, I think. Yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, I, I think they, they definitely won it in the trade. whenever it happened, right? Right. They won that trade whenever it happened. So, Oh, I try shoot. to play cover two. I try to play cover two, and you just ran. No yep. Resistance in the oh. Um, I'm just like picking defensive plays willy nilly. By the way, I, I have like no regard of what personnel you have in the game. Like this is like this is like a Greg Williams approach to play calling, with me giving up the the deep shots. Too. Oh damn! Are you <laughs> yeah, gonna punt? T- no. I'm not gonna punt. Okay, good. Do we give Washington football team any chance on Saturday night? Uh, no. Sorry, Jarvanator. <laughs> I mean, Jarvanator. Let me ask you a question: Who's scoring a touchdown? Like, who's who's getting to the end zone? Because the problem that I have with this is, uh, like Alex Smith, as wonderful as this comeback story has been, like he hasn't played particularly well this year. So that's kind of where I get stuck with. Washington football team versus Tampa Bay. Uh, I I just don't really know where the points are supposed to come are supposed to come from. None of us can get a stop on them. This is going to be a high scoring game. But yeah. yeah, I don't think they have a chance either. And like, I'm genuinely worried about Alex Smith's health. Like, I do not want to watch this game. Like I, I said this before, like the Bucks 
blitz happy defense and they're fast and they're aggressive and like all the things you don't want going up against a guy with a brittle leg. And I, I'm assuming that his leg is brittle. I don't I'm not a, a medical professional, but he has like half a calf. That's that would be a concern for if I was him. Yeah, and I mean the thing is like if you're Todd Bowles, I uh, you kind of have to just oh my god just send the farm at him like it, like why not just try to make him as uncomfortable as possible and send five six even seven guys like if you get the opportunity to because i mean we saw we saw in that first rams game back and and he, he's been better since then but we saw in that first rams game back that alex smith is not like the mobile guy that he kind of used to be which makes sense when you have something that catastrophic happened to you so I think I think Bowles are just going to blitz the hell out of him and I know I had the under, underneath route there but I didn't throw it oh, Jared Goff can't get the ball out <laughs> you definitely what you should have been you should have been doing that blitz that's like the dolphin what the dolphins did to Goff you should have been doing that the whole time because I I'm like off I, I will panic under pressure and I will throw it. what will the Washington football t- name be I think it's just I think they're just going to stick with this, honestly. It seems like people seem to like it, and most importantly, their helmets have... uh, Well, I guess that's not the most important thing, but their helmets have gotten a lot of praise. Uh, I I think they're going to stick with the football team. And also, to respond back... Yeah, I like the uniforms, too. Uh, And to respond back to uh, an earlier comment, I think that... um, I I, I think that this is going to be a pretty low-scoring game in real life, too. I don't think we're going to see... You know, two DK Metcalf 80 yard touchdowns on the first couple plays of the game. <laughs> that, that would uh, be very high surprising. scoring. That's wor- who do you think it's worse for high scoring? Because I, I think it's the, the Seahawks. Worse if, for the Seahawks? If it's high scoring, that means Jared Goff is playing well and the offense is moving. If the Rams' the offense is moving, like, that's they usually don't lose. Yeah, I, I think it, it's probably worse for the uh, It's probably worse for the Seahawks. Do we think that Darius Williams' success could lead to teams looking? Oh, did you get it? Damn, damn. That's why why you don't trade two first-round picks because even when he makes a good play, it doesn't matter. What's the Uh, EPA on that? It's pretty bad. (laughs) The EPA on a fourth and one conversion on the on the plus side of the field, yeah, it's definitely not very good. Uh, Someone asked an interesting question. Do we think that Darius Williams' success will see more shorter corners go outside? And I think it's, it's just kind of a case-by-case basis, right? Like, because I think when you watch the tape and you, you watch Darius Williams, like, what makes him such a good player and such a unique player, really, is that he just really knows where to be on the field at all times. And you know, it, it's kind of cliche to have that smaller player archetype that knows where to be on the field uh, permeate through this discussion, but that's really what it is with, with Darius Williams. Like, he's kind of the not the opposite of Jalen Ramsey, but like the opposite in terms of build. So like that mental side has to be sharp. So I think if you're looking at smaller cornerbacks like him, maybe Tyron Matthew, uh, Mike Hilton for the Steelers, like all these guys, like what makes them good is just they are like savants when it comes to being with the field. Like if you go back and we talk about this on the podcast, you go back and you watch that week 10 game uh, from the Seahawks and the Rams, Darius Williams had two picks, three uh, if you count one that was taken back from the interception or for, for offsides, and all of them are just like this dude's awareness is unbelievable. Yeah, and I think to answer the question, a part of it, maybe teams will be more willing to put smaller guy. Not make a kick. They might be more willing to put a smaller guy out there if, like, the league is, continues to trend towards too high coverages. I think it makes a difference when you're like in that cover three, cover one defense you don't want a small guy out there the Seahawks like famously were looking for bigger corners but if you have safety help help over the top maybe you're not as concerned about them getting out muscled by a DK Metcalf who's probably going to be open on this play (laughs) which he was No, that was actually me, like, controlling Jalen Ramsey. Those were terrible sticks to the Oh, damn, I think I missed this one. Ah, just barely got in. Let's go. You see DK out here? This guy says he loves, or maybe it's a woman, I don't know. He he loves the Rams unis. What are are your thoughts on the Rams unis? 
Uh, I hated them at first, but they are really growing on me. Like, I I think they're awesome. All, all the looks that they have. The only, the only one that's, like, kind of iffy to me now is that uh, the one... I think they put, they went against the Jets with this, where they went gray top and uh, blue pants, which was pretty hideous. But DK stat check, it's... I mean, we'll see next time I'm on offense, but it's got to be at least, you know, what? 200 yards, three touchdowns already in the first half? <laughs> Yeah, that, that's probably right. Oh, what? Eric <laughs> <laughs> Goff could not make that play. And, or nobody could. That's, that was very fake. But yeah, the, my the first Ram. Read was not open. I panicked. The, uh, the, I agree with, with Planet. The, uh, the helmet kind of sucks uh, for the Rams. And I, I can't, I can't get. Uh, what Eric Dickerson said. <laughs> Eric Dickerson said that the Rams logo looks like a penis, and I was like, man, like I don't, like I don't get it. And then someone, someone photoshopped a, a porn star onto it, and I was like, okay, yeah, now I get it. <laughs> uh, Madden Twenty One, it's pretty really solid. Concerned if you, I would have been really concerned if you named the porn star that was photoshopped over. Uh, you know what? I wasn't going to because this is a, a oh, rated, no. a rated T broadcast. Oh my God. Jalen Ramsey or Trey Wyatt? Jalen Ramsey. I, I mean, I, I think Jalen Ramsey is the best cornerback in the league, so. I picked Dance on purpose because it was Super Cup, and I wanted to yeah. see. <laughs> My thoughts on the Rams uniforms is I think they're fine, and I, I thought they were fine when they first came out. Like, I didn't hate them as much as everyone. I hate the gradient numbers on the blue jerseys. I think if they would have just went with yellow, they would have looked better. Mm-hmm. And you, I just think the bone – Whatever color, whatever they're calling it, just, it would be better if it was white. It would just be better. <laughs> yeah, be someone uh, called you out for throwing to a white guy, and I have to say, after yesterday, really, you're gonna throw to a white guy? <laughs> really? After yesterday, after all the hardships that this country went through yesterday, you're really gonna throw a touchdown to a white guy against a black coworker? Wow. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, you've been keeping Aaron Donald in check, I have to say. Okay, now you're just throwing it up. <laughs> yeah, now, now I'm just throwing deep on purpose. <laughs> I think this is what, like what the nerds have when they say let Russ cook. This is what they have in mind. Just let him launch it. Are you doing, any, are you doing 12 personnel? Because if you're not. No, no I'm, I'm, I'm only in 11 personnel. You know what? I'll, I'll give the, If I can get a first down here, I'll give the nerds a shot on, a, on my next set of downs. All right, here we go. <laughs> I want 12 feet play action, and I want that motion. Hold on, I'm 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 here for the fan service. Just oh shoot! <laughs> and that was a white linebacker. Oh no! Wow, you are you are playing close to the edge here, my friend. Uh, 12 personnel. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I actually feel pretty good about this play. <laughs> Ben Baldwin, this oh, is for no. you. <laughs> oh, come oh. on. <laughs> Who's that, Troy Hill? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to keep trying. <laughs> it's just so, it's just so inefficient. Oh, my God. Let's oh, no. go. <laughs> I'm embarrassed for Jalen on that on that play. Oh, the Jets are not going to trade for Deshaun good. Watson. I will say that now, Shea Butler. The Jets are not going to uh, trade for Deshaun Watson. No one's going to trade. Nobody for Nobody is trading for Deshaun Watson because the Texans are not going to trade Deshaun Watson unless yeah. he forces his way out. Like the Texans, like, they, can you imagine they, being this, can you imagine being Watson and, and demanding a trade, and then you get traded, and it's to the Jets. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, can, we, can I actually like rescind the demand? <laughs> Uh yeah I, I, yeah the odds, the odds Watson actually gets traded are I would say none. God, this is bull. I feel like Jalen Ramsey's all over the field. Right, I was like, I feel like he's 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 covering literally everyone. <laughs> Where is he right now? Is he on the left side of the or the your left, my right? Come on, come on, damn it! <laughs> 
There's you know, sometimes I'm throwing into cover because <laughs> hoping you come down and you just hoping you come down with it. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm a 50-50 ball thrower. I play like Russ. You know, you gotta have faith. All right, well that should be good at least. All right, so we talk about some uh, some other games, some AFC games. Yeah, let's uh, what what games are we most interested in on the AFC side? I mean, that Brown Steelers game kind of got some life taken out of it by uh. The, uh, the the COVID news this week with Stefanski and Joe Batonio. And I cannot stress enough how bad I feel for Joe Batonio. I mean, this guy was here for the 1-31 in Hugh Jackson stretch, and they are so close to – or not so close. Like, they've made the playoffs. Like, they're here, and he can't play. Like, that just sucks so much in a way, like, it's hard to even describe. How much do we think Kevin Stefanski missing the game is actually going to matter? Uh, I don't know. When will we stop making excuses for Baker? You are on the wrong show if you think that, that we don't make excuses for Baker around here. Uh, I don't really have any excuses for Baker. I blame everything on him. Yeah, we blame even everything on him, even when it's Nye's fault. Right. Uh, how big of a loss is Stefanski? I mean, I would imagine it's pretty big because I, I don't think he's relinqu like relinquished play calling duties all season long, right? Right. But I'm, uh, I'm assuming like he's in on the game planning. I guess the it's like a more of a like a philosophical question. Like how much does like play calling on game day like it's like a feel thing I would think. And how much does that matter? I feel like we're gonna get those answers. Maybe the guy that's gonna be calling plays for the Browns is good at it too. We don't even know. Yeah, I think what's interesting to me is like if you go back to uh, that Ohio State Clemson game where. Um, they, I mean, they had kind of the same thing where, where Tony Elliott, I think he had COVID or for some reason had to miss the game. And you, you saw like, I, for, at least to me, like it, it was just so, so clear that they missed that play caller. And to a degree, like the offense can run itself because like you guys all practice and stuff like that. But, um, not having the guy who's been like leading you the whole season is, is pretty tough. I think. I, I would think like just. His comfort level is different. Like, it's a different guy He's in his headset. That makes a difference, too. And especially going up against that defense and what how different it's going to be compared to last week. Because last week, if you watch that game, like, the Steelers, that did not look like the Steelers' defense from the first 16 weeks. Like, I don't even think they, I don't know if they put a lot of effort into game planning. I think he's going to look a lot different this week. And Baker might have some problems with it. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, all right, let's, uh, oh, man, oh, man, this is looking good for me. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Oh, too much air. <laughs> I threw it too late. Damn it. I was in the triple cover. Yeah. I, I, look, if I throw, like, a second earlier, we would have been cooking. I, I mean, uh, I think we have some questions on uh, Twitter that right, I can see. try to find. Um, what were those BFF questions? Seth, Selena asks. No, nah, I was joking. I was gonna like do like like a problematic <laughs> question, and I just thought, like that might actually get him into trouble. Yeah, that, that might that might actually backfire a little bit. Um, oh, that's a good question. What games have we been playing the most this quarantine? I oh shit, I have played uh, a ton of uh, Ghost of Tsushima, uh, Spider Man. I've recently beat. I was playing um, the Star what was this, the Star Wars game like the like the Lost Jedi kid, the the redhead kid. Oh, I was yeah. playing that a lot. Um, and oh, yeah. 2K. Oh, and Grand Theft Auto. I played the Grand Theft Auto five story again like three times during quarantine. Like that's that's a, that that was the state of my brain. Really, just playing murder games and sports games. <laughs> uh, I've been playing Madden for the most part. To be honest, it's like a boring answer. Uh, I've been playing Fall Guys. Oh, Fall Guys. Have you Definitely Fall play Guys? a lot of. Yeah, I play a lot of Fall Guys. Let's have go. You won? I've never won. I won once. Like, it was, like, fluke. It was, like, an early time. When I first started playing, I don't know how I won, but I haven't won since. 
big TP boy. Th that's got to be Bryce, right? Because he just asked, what's your favorite tier of competitive Pokemon? I don't even know how to answer that question. Yeah, I, I have no idea what that means. I'm sorry, bud. <laughs> um. All right. Let's let's do some. Uh, oh, we have a question. Uh. From this game. Uh, that's related to this game at least. This is on Twitter from HD Robot. Why is Russell Wilson bad? Uh, better That's answer that one. question. We're going to bring in Andy Benoit. Formerly <laughs> <laughs> uh, do we sports gamble? We're not allowed to answer that. But if I was interested in doing something like that, I think I might partake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would think about doing. Yeah, I would think about doing something like that. And I, I think the answer back to that Russ question: Why is Russell Wilson bad? It's just. You know, it, when you you play that style of football, it's it's it can be inefficient at times. I don't I don't really think it means anything about Russ the player. It's just if you're gonna run around and throw heaves and deep shots a lot, it's gonna be some variance. That's all. I don't think he's actually bad. Yeah, I, I mean, I think when he's going bad, it, it's because of what you said, and like his game is just volatility at times, like controlled volatility. Listen, he's so good in that environment, but. I mean, it's hard to be good at in that environment for 16 games straight. So you're going to have these these streaks, these old streaks where he doesn't look as good as he did, and you're going to have these hot streaks like at the beginning of the year when he was so good. Uh, the uh, do the someone's. I think someone asked a question: Is Bills minus six a mortal lock? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, we touched on this on the pod today, but. The Colts kind of match up well with the Bills' defense. Like I think Jonathan Taylor, with the way he's playing over the past few weeks, can turn this into a game of, of like ground control a little bit for them. Oh, catch that shit! Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think that if you're uh, uh, our podcast is called The Counter. It's on uh, you can find it on Spotify, Apple Music, uh, USA Today. Uh, yeah, the Colts defense has definitely been a little bit iffy, but I just think I, I, I and I think the Bills will win. Uh, just to be clear, I think the Bills will win, but I think I think the Bills, or I think the Colts can cover that six spread if Jonathan Taylor. And it, yeah, this sounds like the laziest analysis ever, but if Jonathan Taylor can kind of get going and Phil Rivers doesn't have a disastrous Phil Rivers performance, I kind of expect them to cover that spread. But just when you look at like Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs, like I think. More than anything, more than anything, it's like the physical style that Josh Allen plays with that can kind of ruin the Colts' defense. Because if you just want to sit back and zone a lot, and I know that a lot of that's going to have matching principles where guys aren't just covering grass, but if you want to play like that, the arm strength is kind of what can shred you there a little bit. Yeah, and I, I don't trust anyone in that secondary to like be able to man up with Stefan Diggs, if that's the route they eventually take, if Josh Allen is having success against zone. And yeah. that's my one concern. But I do think, I mean, the, the Colts are just a well-coached team. So the, the only way I think it turns into a blowout is if, like, the talent disparity really comes into play. And, I mean, there's a possibility that will happen. But I think the Rivers is Dude, are you kidding me? <laughs> what are you doing, dude? <laughs> I'm spending way too much time talking about what I'm talking. I'm just like picking random plays. I, I played Tampa too. How is that like? Because you took o you you took over the safety and you brought him down towards the line of scrimmage. Like DK ran right past you. Okay, that's on me. <laughs> like I'm picking the play and then I'm like not remembering what coverage I'm in. Hold on, I was about to tell me at the top to how many yards DK Mecca have. Oh, it didn't tell me. I'm trying to give you flashbacks to covering the Jets. Uh, uh, that's gonna psych you. You know, I remember the last the last Jets game I went to was that 49ers game. <laughs> and I, I remember I remember the exact moment I decided I was not going to games anymore because it, it like during COVID era, it's just not worth the time. But that uh the first play where Raheem Mostert ran eighty yards for a touchdown, I was like, I I am uh, not. Justice, shut up. Justice, get out of here. 
<laughs> he just just he asked uh, number one for number six, twenty twenty two first, and Wentz for number one overall. Do you do it? <laughs> He's still trying that. No, you already got ratio, bud. Stay away. Um, I'm struggling. Who has the best chance to win the most road games in this playoffs? I think I'll go with the Ravens. I think the Bucks. Right? Oh, but right, because the Bucks are on the road this week. That's a good one. Um, and I think and, they'll play the Saints. Yeah, the Bucks is actually a better answer because they'll play what? Uh, they will play. Saints, I think. Tim, yeah, they'll play the Saints if they win. But I do think the Saints are just like a terrible matchup for the Bucks. Like talent wise, on paper, they're they're pretty even. But I just think how they match up. They're going to be able to take away those throws that Brady has had a lot of success on this year. The Bucks' offense as a whole has had success on. And they can stop the run from too high, which makes covering all those receivers the, the Bucks have, it makes it so much easier. Yeah. Um, wow. I did not even realize it was fourth down. I was talking and reading questions. See, that's Fuck. what that's my excuse to the coverage. Yeah, at least it happened uh, on pump for me. That's okay. Do we do we think the uh, the Ravens have any chance of make winning the Super? Bowl? Obviously, if they make it, they'll have it. Most of Brady's production has come against complete dog shit defenses, so I would not count Washington football team out. I mean, that's fair, but they Washington plays offense too. And have you seen Alex Smith play football this year? That that's like my counter to all this stuff. The counter, which you should subscribe to on Apple Music and Spotify. <laughs> I forgot to I forgot to tweet it out, but Mina Kimes was on today's episode. So. Wait, did oh you know, yeah? If you don't like us, go listen to her. Five hundred thirteen passing yards on twenty three attempts. <laughs> That's all on me, by the way. I'm not giving yeah, I know. you any credit for this. It's my fault. And we're about, I think, uh, mm, we'll see, we'll see. But I was thinking, I feel pretty good about this play for a touchdown, but I think I'll take the interception instead, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> smarter, smarter, smarter play. play. Smarter play is the interception. <laughs> now, now Russ will be extra motivated not to throw one his next time out. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, actually. An interception is better than a throwaway. Someone, uh, s- someone just asked me if I knew that Arthur Smith was the son of FedEx, and yeah, I do. And look, I'm still not cool with FedEx. Like, I still have very much have a vendetta out against them. Uh, I'm not happy f- with having to wait. Like, <laughs> and it, it, like when I say it out loud, it sounds so stupid. Having to wait two whole extra weeks for my PlayStation, but they made it seem like they stole that shit. So I- I'm still not happy with them, and the fact that it kind of went off the grid for like a week is not a good thing, but obviously I have it now since we're playing and we're talking. And since I have your attention, uh, yeah, I agree, UPS gang for life. Uh, UPS oh, t- delivered my PS5 on time, by the way. Yeah, uh, the, the PS5s I sent to uh, Kofi got there on time. He just missed the initial delivery. Uh, but, and I don't remember what I was saying. I was just rambling. Oh yeah, follow Site Supply if, you, uh, if you're trying to find those PS5s. Uh, site supply and spiel times, I think, were the two that I used. I have to say, Johnny Hecker's video game, Johnny Hecker, is pretty good. That's oh my god, for, fun a, row. for a second, I thought I touched that ball. I was about to spaz out, dude. Yeah, basically, just follow- I called out for. I'm surprised I didn't get called out for uh, targeting Tyler Higby. Or after you, I was <laughs> racism for targeting Cooper Cup. You look, it is a little racist. What did, what, no, actually, it's completely. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, let's let's dig into this Ravens Titans matchup a little bit. Okay, it's Spiel Times T I M E S, but you did spell Spiel right, Shea Butter. Um. Uh, so. What do you think about the Ravens? Like, do you think the Ravens can win the Super Bowl? This? Like, do you think they have a chance to legitimately make the Super Bowl? No, uh, because Patrick Mahomes is still alive and breathing. Uh, and as long as he is, I 
don't really see a point in picking anyone but the Chiefs. But I do think that the Ravens can kind of go on like a mini run here. Like if they made it to, uh, if if they made it to the AFC Championship game, I don't think I would be terribly surprised. Because like if they win this week, then they go to Buffalo, unless Buffalo loses somehow. Uh, and then I think, uh, I think the Browns need to win though for them to play Buffalo. Oh, otherwise they're playing the Chiefs, and that's probably the end. <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> I don't want to watch Lamar lose to the Chiefs again. I don't want to watch them lose to the Titans again. Dude. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. Where is Aaron Donald? I feel like he hasn't made one play. I, I played quarters. I played cover four. Like, that was not my fault. And I was controlling a linebacker. I'm not taking the blame for that one. The other Evan touchdowns you've thrown, my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Four plays, 98 yards, two Russ scrambles, one deep bomb. Russ is cooking. I, like, this might be a hot take, but I'm not, like, entirely sure that the Ravens are not the second best team in the NFL right now. All right. You want to go on a little bit more about that? Neutral field. Like, what's, who, who's, like, the consensus pick for second best team? The Packers or is it the Bills? Oh my god. <laughs> that was a straight up man coverage too. <laughs> right, and that guy wasn't even in uh, that guy was covering someone else. It's just terrible. Someone just asked, do we trust the Titans defense? I don't at all. Um No. no. The thing like the Titans defense wasn't all that good last year, but they still had DNPs like doing the game planning, so it was a little it was like you know, reliable. Now they don't have any of that, and now it's just totally unreliable. And I think we're going to see the result of that when they play the Ravens. I, I would not be surprised if the Ravens put up 35 points. Okay, big BT boy is definitely Bryce because he asked, who will win in a cage match, Justice or Kurt Hines? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and another touchdown! Seven touchdowns! <laughs> uh... <laughs> I'm taking Hines. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Seven touchdowns. Let's go. I'm just also, talking through this L I'm taking. Yeah. Someone asked if we could uh, upload the audio to the counter, and I'll, I'll ask Chris. Maybe we can look into that. I don't. I really don't see why not. But uh, yeah, you should do that. I, I'd yeah. be down to do that. Yeah. I mean, uh, it will take no effort. Are there any teams we haven't talked? We haven't talked about the Bears yet. Why would we do that? <laughs> oh, I can make fun of Mitch. We can talk about the Saints. Actually, let's talk about this. Can the Bears actually win this game? Uh, yes. Like, why not? Like, what? Can you envision a game where the Bears are close enough? like pull it out at the end and I think so if Drew Brees is bad like that's <laughs> the question I think he's capable of being bad because he's like 47 <laughs> wait Bryce didn't know the Bears were in the playoffs <laughs> oh okay uh, I mean I, I will agree with you there like I definitely see a pass for the, the game to be close just because the Bears defense is so you know pretty good and uh like, it can be close, but I think that they would have to have a pretty crazy performance on defense to actually get over the top because the Saints' defense is is one of the best in the league right now, and the Bears are starting Mitchell Trubisky. Uh, and a wild card, 10299, definitely just asked a, uh, a good question. Are all the NFC games going to be boring this weekend? Uh, I think this one's going to be good. Oh, yeah, this the is going to be good. Games. Yeah. Seahawks Rams are gonna be good. Blitzing the hell out of me. God. Yeah, Seahawks Rams are gonna be good. The other two, I do think, are gonna be boring. The only way it's not boring in in Saints Bears if if like Trubisky has like a comical game. Like if he's just like regular bad, then it's it's like whatever. But he's like if he's like comically bad, then I think it will be entertaining. And if Drew Brees is bad, I think it'll. Be yeah. Oh, what's the path for the football team to keep it competitive against the Bucks? Um, I think that defense just has to be, like, be unconscious, you know? 
Yeah, like Chase Young has to eat Tom Brady. <laughs> yep, pretty much. <laughs> Someone said they need some relationship advice, but not sure if this is the platform. Eh, throw it in there. Ask, ask yeah, away. We'll see what I got you. I got you. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I think the best path for them is, like, the, the Washington's defense just has to play out of its mind, which is possible because I think, like, on paper, oh, my God, dude. Kalen Ramsey getting torched by Greg Olson? See, like, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> Greg Olson has, like, half a foot. Why do you keep playing that double bus coverage? That was the second time I played it. I shouldn't have played it a second time, yes. But I, I like that matchup. I like leaving Jalen Ramsey alone on Greg Olson who can't run. Damn. Troy Hill's your best cornerback today. Yeah, I was going to say. You know, one interesting yeah. thing about Washington's defense is uh, we talk about on the podcast, the counter, which you can find on Spotify and Apple Music, uh, is they've got some really good safety play from guys you might not have heard of. Cam Curl, who I think was a sixth-round rookie this year, and uh, Jeremy Reeves, who I don't know where he came from. I don't know how long he's been with the team, but that guy has had a really good season. And, like, when you, you pair – basically, it, it's just going to it's just going to have to come down to – Chase Young, John Allen, Deron Payne, Montez Sweat, Ryan Kerrigan, just absolutely blasting Brady. And then you need the, those guys, Curl and Reeves, to kind of come over the top and make plays on the back end. Because, uh, I mean, like, as bad as Washington's offense has been, their defense has been just as good on the flip side. So, you know, I think that this is going to be an ugly, low-scoring affair. But, you know, I just keep coming back to how the hell is Washington going to score? And that's where I get stuck. Yeah. And I, that, that's where I get stuck on the spread, too. Like even if you're like, yes, Washington has the advantage on that side of the ball, like their defense versus the offense, like the Bucks are still going to score like 17 points, and I'm not sure Alex Smith is going to be able to match that. <clears throat> yes. Also, thank Does you, Jarvan, for the correction. Yeah, they do. They do. Uh, and, and, you know, as shaky as the Bucks defense has been, like maybe over the back half of the season, this is not the team that's ready to exploit that. So, uh yeah. You know, I I feel pretty good about the Bucks' chance to win this game. And also, thank you, Jarvanator, for correcting me. Cam Curl was drafted in the seventh round, not the sixth round. That's correct. <laughs> Uniform uh, had more sacks than Aaron Donald in this game. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna keep blitzing you, dude. Like I I don't really know what else to do. Actually, I don't want to do that here. Ah, oh, I should have just sent six. Fuck it. But it's too late. I probably shouldn't be cursing so much. <laughs> oh, <my> oh <laughs> man. <laughs> Look, you... Like, Jared t- Goff is, like, actually having a pretty good game. I know, he is. Four he, touchdowns. He, I just he saw the stats at the top of the screen. <clears throat> I mean, what would the reaction be if this is how this game plays out? Like I think we're gonna get we would get so many oh the Seahawks are the team to beat now. <laughs> we're already like aren't we are already getting those like why am I punting? I don't know. I was about to be very gracious. <laughs> I'm targeting Higby. Sorry, everyone. <sighs> Three minutes left, and I this is just an absolute beat. I'm gonna see if I can get the sixty points. Wow. I just considered audibling to inside zone until I realized what the down Oh, was. false start. <laughs> Fourth and 25. I got you right where I want. Uh, is there any games we haven't talked about? I don't think there is. Like, we've covered all the games. Maybe we should make some predictions, like, for how the playoffs are going to go, because we did that. Chiefs earlier. winning the Super Bowl. So what's the Super Bowl matchup you want to see most? Uh, Packers Chiefs. Just because yeah, I, 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 li- I like I like touchdowns. But I want to see I want to see I want to see Tom Brady versus Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs because I mean we've I feel like people were picking that as a Super Bowl matchup for like eight years in a row, the Packers and the Patriots, and we finally might get to see them go head to head in the postseason, and I want to see that. Uh, but I want to see the Saints, I think. And I just want to see that defense again <clears throat> against 
Chiefs when Drew Brees has had more time to, you know, because he, in that game, he was bad in the first half, but he kind of you know, picked it up in the second half and they came back. I want to see that for a full 60 minutes, and I think that would give us the best Super Bowl. I honestly yeah. think the Packers would get blown out by the Chiefs. <clears throat> I'm running now. I'm just going to run out because we've talked about all the games, but I have nothing left. <laughs> all right. Um, Did that relationship question ever come in? I don't know. I I, I kind of missed it. Did the relationship question ever come in? Uh, did someone ever ask that? I was looking at my computer. <clears throat> but yeah, this is uh this has been fun for me at least. I, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, someone <laughs> asked a question. You, on, yeah, someone uh, asked a question on Twitter. If you were in charge. Do Matt Ryan and Julio stay career Falcons, or would you send them off together into the sunset with Shani for one more time for some big-time draft picks? I did get my stimmy. Um, I think for me, just like as a Falcons fan, I, I, it's tough because I think Ryan has probably been like the best quarterback in, in franchise history. But I think what you do is you draft a quarterback, uh, you play out this year, and... If Ryan sucks, then you have a reason to trade him. If not, then uh, then you, maybe you stick around with him for another year. But I think you you draft a quarterback where there's Trey Lance, Justin Fields, Zach Wilson, whichever guy's available for you or four, and just kind of play it by ear. Julio, I don't think you ever trade. I think you just kind of let him rock the ship and, and, and let him stay until it's over. But Ryan, you know, if they pick a quarterback, that's going to be the writing on the wall. And also, Godspeed, Maine, just asked a question, how do I feel less depressed about the Texans? You don't. Uh, at least not until next year, because that's when the you can start looking like a real football team again. I mean, you have Deshaun Watson. They're worse, like fates than an NFL fan. You right. Can like, you, fan. you can be a Bears fan. Like I feel like Houston fans, you really just got to ride out this upcoming season, and then you'll be straight. But uh, it's also yeah, like Texans, Texans games are like entertaining too. It's not like they're getting blown out. Every like Deshaun has them in games, so. Yeah, and last question from Shea Butter. Again, Jets, quick rebuild. You draft a quarterback, you throw money at offense, and you pray. And uh, I think that's going to do it for us. Uh, thanks for rocking with us on the first Madden Twitch stream. Uh, I hope that this was enjoyable for you as it was for me, not for Steven. And uh, we will be back sometime next week, sometime next Thursday, probably around the same time. Now that we know what we're doing, we'll probably be there at 4. Steven, you got any parting shots for the people? I'm going to play better defense next week. I'm not going to give up 58 points. That's my bold prediction. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody.